Hello and welcome to the AARP Arizona Community Education Program. We're a volunteer-led program that holds discussions on topics of interest such as Medicare, Social Security, fraud, finances, and caregiving. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about Medicare. We've had videos on introduction to Medicare, original Medicare, Medicare Advantage, and today we'd like to do a Q&A on Medicare. And these are questions that come from our audiences in the past that have had specific needs for information. They provided these questions, and we're going to try to answer some of them today. So hopefully we'll all learn something from this uh, discussion. So we'll start off by asking Joyce, why do people tell me to think about my needs when I research Medicare options? In order to answer that question, you're going to have to look at things because there's going to be a variety of choices to look over when you're choosing your plan. So it's best if you question yourself as to what you need for your own personal health care needs. You know, uh, you need to know, first of all, if original Medicare or an Advantage plan is the best for you. And you're, so the best way to do that is by asking yourself some questions. Then you can pick a plan that will fit your needs. You may not get all 100% of the things that you want, but you can get most things that are most important to you. Part A is your hospital insurance, and that doesn't cost you if you have 40 work credits. Part B has a premium deducted from your Social Security or your railroad retirement. Or some people pay by check, cashier check, money order, or their banking account. What you pay depends on your choice of a plan and your budget and your finances. You will have, first of all, two options, which are original Medicare and the Advantage plan. You will need to look at both of these to see what fits your needs. Then you will need to think of who you want for a doctor. Original Medicare lets you go to the doctor of your choice as long as they accept Medicare. But Advantage plans you go to the doctors that are in their network. So check to see if your doctor that you presently use is qualified either in the network or to take Medicare. Next, see if a plan will cover your own, your very own personal health, uh, health needs. There are five major problems for people that are over 65. One of them is cataract surgery. The other is the upper GI endoscopy, which you get because you might have heartburn or you have acid reflects. Colonoscopies are for colon cancer or polyps, and possibly you may need a biopsy in that. A new replacement comes from arthritis or a hip replacement comes from the osteoporosis. And Medicare covers these five major conditions that you possibly could get after 65 if it happens. Next, you're going to have to consider your drugs, which are usually included in an Advantage plan, but not in Medicare original plans. So you may need, if you pick an original plan, to buy a drug insurance, and that's going to cost you extra. You will also possibly need to have a Medigap or a supplement policy, and that will cost you an extra premium. Those plans help you so that they cover co-pays and co-insurance. Advantage plans can cover drugs. They, some of them, uh, some of the plans will also possibly cover your hearing aids and dentist needs and your drugs. But you must check each policy to see if that is covered. With drug coverage, you're going to have to remember that there are different tiers for drugs, and that can change from year to year. So to be sure, check your policy each year to see which drugs are covered. When you check plans, be also sure that you see about an Advantage plan that it has an HMO, which is a health maintenance organization, or a PPO, which is a preferred provider organization. 
HMOs will cost you more to go out and network and you will have to need a referral if you want to see a specialist. PPOs let you see a specialist without a referral. Be sure to check the drug plans again to see if the drugs you take are covered. If you're on insulin, it's very important that you check for that because those drugs can be very, very expensive. The drugs are rated in tiers and the usually higher the tier, usually the more the drug will cost you. You will need to check your budget to see which plan meets your needs and your ability to pay not only your premiums, but you have to think about your co-pays, your co-insurance, your deductibles, your out-of-pocket expenses. Advantage plans have a cap on out-of-pocket expenses, so check the policy and see what it is. This year, Advantage plans will um, provide end-stage rental coverage, which was not covered before. Now, the rumor is, and I believe it's going to happen, that the Advantage plans premiums will go down, and that's simply because they expect a lot of people that are on original Medicare because of the uh, rental, the end stage rental, they're gonna transfer over to the Advantage plan. And that's going to cause the premiums to go down and it's expected about $21 a month. So we can look at the policy and see. Advantage plans don't usually cover non-emergency care out of your plan's network. So, if you're not real healthy, what you want to do is make sure that you look at an original care plan. You cannot purchase a supplement or a Medicare gap, a Medigap plan if you choose an Advantage plan. Every year, you should check your plan and then compare it to others because the changes may affect you or your health. Also, check a plan for the hospitals and the pharmacies that you use and what drugs are covered in what tiers. You'll also need to know if you have insurance when you travel. Some Advantage plans cover you in certain parts of the United States. For instance, mine covers me in Arizona and when I go home to Wisconsin, but not foreign travel. Others in original Medicare, you're covered all over the United States but you're not covered when you do foreign travel. So you will need an extra policy with your original Medicare if you travel a lot in the foreign countries. If you decide not to retire when you're 65, then you really need to check with your human resources person or your benefit person to see how that insurance that they offer you is gonna work with Medicare. Medicare will be your primary insurance, but you you may get to postpone the Part B as long as you're working, and then you can sign up for Part B later. Just be sure to check with that department and see what's covered and how your work insurance is going to work with Medicare, because each company, I'm sure, is going to have a different idea how it will work. Also, check about your COBRA plan, because usually when you have a COBRA plan, um, Medicare, uh, you won't get Medicare. COBRA usually ends, I should say, when you uh, go on Medicare. Some of the policies will take into consideration your gender. They're going to take into consideration your age, where you live, your tobacco use or non-tobacco use, use for a Medigap or a supplement plan. Plans can increase with price and age on the Medigap and the supplement plans. You also need to check your annual notices that you get every year, either in September or October, if you are on Medicare from your insurance company or policy that you picked, because your plan is going to show you the difference between what they provided for you last year and what they're going to provide for you next year, your drugs and different things. It will show you the changes. Should you need help paying for a Medicare plan, then you need to look at your Medicare book and you will find out that you can call Medicare or SHIP and look for extra help. These plans do take in your income level. There are some important issues or questions, all of these, that you need to check out and compare in order to make a good decision on your health care with the plan that you're going to choose. So check out your current plan again every year. 
And if you have health changes or the policy changes, then you need to look at another plan. And if you know your needs and you answer your questions, you can make a good choice between which option you want, Medicare, Medicare Advantage, and which plan you'd like to go with. Thank you and have a good day. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Joyce. Now you touched a little bit on travel and we get that question a lot. So let's get a little bit more detail on that topic specifically. So Rob, I'd like to ask you, am I covered by Medicare if I travel? No voice. Your microphone is. The answer to that question is, if you have original Medicare, you will have coverage anywhere in the United States or U.S. territories. If you have an Advantage plan, it may or may not cover travel outside of the coverage area. Larger plans with larger companies generally apply to any state in which they provide planned coverage. Now, if you are traveling internationally, things are different. You will not be covered by original Medicare, unless you have purchased a supplement and not all supplements include international emergency care. So you need to evaluate that very carefully. Some of the Advantage plans will also cover international travel, again, for emergency care, not long-term care. Great. Thank you, Rob. Let me ask you another question. Will Social Security automatically enroll me in Medicare when I turn 65, Rob? The answer to that is if you are already collecting some form of Social Security benefit, then Social Security will automatically enroll you in original Medicare Part A and Part B and this will occur just prior to your 60th birthday. However, it is up to you to decide whether you want Part D, medication coverage, or perhaps most importantly, do you really want a Medicare Advantage plan? And finally, if you want to stick with traditional Medicare, you will have to make the effort to buy a Medigap policy if that is what you want. So bottom line, don't let Social Security do the thinking for you. Do your research and make the decisions in a timely manner. Good advice. Thank you. So what is the difference between a Medicare Advantage HMO and a PPO? Bonnie? Well, as Joyce touched on a little bit earlier, um, the Medicare Advantage plans are based on networks of doctors who have agreed uh, and hospitals that, that have agreed to be a part and accept Medicare Advantage plans. And with an HMO, which is a health managed um, organization, that means that you have a smaller network to work with, but you have to choose doctors and specialists and hospitals within that network. Uh, the PPO, which is the Preferred Physician Organization, is a wider network, but it allows you the freedom to pick the doctor or, or hospital or specialist that you want to go to. And you also will not need a referral to go to that uh, specialist, whereas you do with an HMO. Now, the cost is probably higher. Uh, you need to 
compare the plans, but uh, to get a PPO plan. And I think there are fewer options currently for uh, PPO plans than there are for HMO plans. But uh, basically, if you have doctors that you really want to keep, just call and see. If they are included in the network already, you may not need a PPO plan to continue seeing them. So you need to do a little research and see which one works best for you. Can't hear you. <laughs> we couldn't hear you. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Medicare outlines some specific rights that everyone has through the program. What are those Medicare rights, Bonnie? Well, number one, everybody at all times needs to expect to be treated with dignity and respect. And if that is not happening, you can report that and they maybe will take a look at the providers and see if they want to keep them in the network. Um, you need to be protected from any discrimination. Once again, if you have a situation where you feel like you're being discriminated against, you need to report that as well. Uh, we also have the right for all of our personal and health information to be kept private. And so if you feel like uh, some information is gotten out, that shouldn't have been re released to other people. You know, you usually sign a form as to who your information can be released to. Um, so you can verify if you did not uh, permit someone to have that information, you need to report it. Um, you also have the right to get this information in the language that you can understand from the provider. So if you are, say, a Spanish speaking, that's your primary language, you have the right to have all the paperwork and the explanations done in your language. or And that applies to any uh, other language also. Um, you have the right to have all of your Medicare questions answered and that's a very good thing. If you're headed in to have any kind of a procedure done, um, you want to ask as many questions as you can in regards to the Medicare coverage, your individual plans coverage, know ahead of time so there are no surprises. You have the right to access uh, doctors, specialists, and hospitals for medically necessary services. Uh, you need to learn about choices in a clear language that you can understand. Sometimes some of the medical terms are confusing, so you need to just let them know they need to explain it in more common or layman terms so that we can understand it more easily. Uh, you can get Medicare covered services in an emergency, but that, um, in other words, even if you're not in your area, uh, your home, and you're traveling in the United States, if it's an emergency, you can get coverage. Uh, you get a decision about your health care payment, coverage, services, or drug coverage. And that comes in really with your choice of plans. So that's why you need to really review the policies and talk to advisors who, uh, from the different insurance companies who can explain exactly what their plan covers. Uh, you can also request, this would be an appeal of certain decisions, if you are billed for something that you feel is not fair. And my advice to you is every month you get a statement from Medicare that always says, this is not a bill, but they will outline any services that you received during that month, which doctors you went to on what date. You need to look at that very carefully because if for some reason your Medicare ID has gotten out, and someone is going and getting services under your identification number, you can look at your statement and say, I never went to this doctor, I didn't have this done, and then you want to report it. This is how we tackle that major problem of Medicare fraud. And also you can file complaints or grievances about the quality of their care because there are set standards that Medicare providers must meet. And if they don't, Medicare wants to know this. 
so you can report that to them and hopefully things will improve with every year. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Well, we get a lot of questions from people uh, specifically about Medicare and the, the various plans available. And one more question I'll, I'm going to ask myself and share the information is, can I get Medicare with a pre-existing condition? The good news is yes. You are allowed to sign up for original Medicare or a Medicare Advantage plan, regardless of your health condition, particularly during initial enrollment period. But be aware that at that time, if you choose original Medicare and want to purchase a supplemental plan or a Medigap plan to help pay for the out-of-pocket costs, you have an initial sign-up period where no questions are asked. If you do not take that policy at that time or sign choose to take that policy at that time, and maybe a year or two later, decide you want to purchase a Medigap plan, you may be asked health questions and the pricing will be, uh, the policy will be priced accordingly. Also, if you choose a Medicare Advantage plan and later want to move back to original Medicare and decide you'd like to purchase a supplemental plan or a Medigap plan, you may be screened for your health conditions and the policy premiums will reflect the health condition. So that's just a caution to be aware of, and it's something to keep in mind, particularly during the initial enrollment period. And that's why it's important to do research ahead of time to decide what you'd like to sign up for, because there are certain windows that we want to be sure we want to, uh, that you want to make and make the appropriate decisions for yourself. So one last uh, follow-up question for uh, Gary. Did you have a comment that you'd like to share with us? Yeah. Um, the thing I'd like to say is that, I mean, listen to the information that's given to you, and a lot of times it generates more questions. Um, I guess uh, my, my big thing is I wish I had all of you, when I was ready to sign up for Medicare, I would have made a better choice in the beginning. But uh, take the time to listen to what people have to say, get your questions answered, and then get your Medicare. You'll make a much better decision. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. And I'll just add one more tip. Use the Medicare.gov website if you can. You can use that to search through Part D or drug plans that are available in your local area. You can look at Medicare Advantage or Part C plans that are available to you where you live. And you can also research um, Medigap or supplemental plans. There are links to every private company that offers those uh, through that website. And the number is currently listed on the screen. It's 800, if you'd like to call Medicare, 800. 633-4227. There are also other resources available, and that's the State Health Insurance Assistance Program, or SHIP, and that's www.shiptacenter.org. Just type in Arizona, and you'll get the results for Arizona, as well as the Area Agencies on Aging, 800-432-4040. Excellent source for help. You can talk to a counselor or make an appointment to visit with them. And of course, the AARP website at www.aarp.org slash Medicare QA. You can talk to somebody at 888-687-2277. Well, thank you for joining us today. This is just, uh, these are just a few of the questions that we get asked. But we hope we touched on some of the highlights that might help you make a better choice for you when you uh, enter your enrollment period. And particularly now, we have open enrollment where you can make changes in your drug plans or change from original to advantage and, and back. On behalf of all the volunteers that joined us today, we want to thank you and thank you for visiting AARP Arizona. We'll be back with more information and more discussions and please stay tuned. Thank you very much.